We are at chapter 22, verse 4. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. Sorry, writing down what I did last time. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. We normally don't look at humility as something which would bring wealth and honor and life. We look at these uh, athletes who are you know, puffed up or these um, starlets and stars of the Hollywood screen who are out there just you know, blathering on. Uh, but here it says that humility, realizing that you are, first of all, a sinner who needs help. Secondly, you have gifts given to you by God and that they're not, it's not because of you that, that you could do things. So for instance, I'm sometimes told I have a good singing voice and I do, but that's something that was given to me. I, I did some work. Um, I followed because of my fear of the Lord and my fear of my parents. My mom got me in choirs, and so I did some work on it. Um, but really, the fact that I sing well is just a gift. Um, it is something which God has made of me, but it's something that I just was given. Okay. Uh, now I have received honor. I have received great wealth, though I have occasionally actually been recompensed. Um, certainly it's part of my life. It, it gives joy to others. It gives joy to me. Um, it helps me in my employment. Um, so it does give these things and I get them because, you know, and, and because I am Lord willing, humble, I'm talking about, so am I humble? No, uh, because I am humble, um, it makes it a, a better gift. Um, and people can enjoy it with me. Uh, fear of the Lord, the second aspect of this, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? It is the seeking after the things that God writes. So then again, you go to his precepts, you fulfill them, um, which is the path which leads to salvation. Christ has put you on uh, where he guards you and keeps you, but it also is the path in life which leads to um, helping out your neighbor, uh, working working diligently, being prudent in your preparations, all these things that we have that, that add together to bring wealth and honor in life. Let's go to five. In the paths of the wicked he lie thorns and snares, but he who guards his soul stays far from them. I'm going to use Mike Pence this time. I spoke badly of politicians not too long ago. Uh, so let's use Mike Pence. Mike Pence follows the Billy Graham rule, basically, which is be with your wife and don't be with p women alone who are not your wife. Okay, he's avoiding pitfalls. He's not going to do the, what Governor Mark Sanford did, where he disappeared down to uh, South America for a couple of weeks. No one knew where he was because he was chasing after a woman. So he avoided the pitfalls, Mark um, Mike Pence, not Mark Sanford, Mike Pence, avoided the pitfalls, um, and he guarded his soul, right? He guarded his relationship with his wife and his relationship with God and his relationship with everyone else, and he's still doing it, as far as I know. Um, so we want to be similarly, do similarly. Be wise. Know that we are all sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God, that there are temptations out there which can ensnare us. Uh, so we follow uh, God's precepts. We seek after things which are good. We, we go to where it is noble and right um, and stay in those things and stay with and try to be around often people who are of a similar nature. And that avoids a lot of the problems and perils that would otherwise, you know, trip us up. Let's go to six, a favorite. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. As a parent of young children, this is very reassuring to me. And I know as a parent of those who reach, I have one daughter who's now an adult, another who's 16, you know, another who's a teen. It can be very reassuring that their present actions, which aren't always pleasing, um, although my three daughters are doing well, 
I'm, I'm very pleased with them. But I've seen, and I, you know, see cases where this happens, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it happens with my daughters at some point. Um, sometimes Molly in high school was not the best student. Their present actions are not their future results. The future results are in Christ. When you bring them up in Jesus, Jesus says he's going to keep them. And though they may wander like the prodigal son off and be with the pigs, we know Christ is going to bring them back. And it may well be after we die. Um, but we're going to do presently the thing which this verse says, train them up. We're going to give them God's word. We're going to give them the sacraments. We're going to keep them in church. We're going to keep training them up. And we're going to build in in them, by God's power, through the Holy Spirit, we're going to build that foundation. We're going to use materials which are golden. Um, the Bible talks about, you know, building with good materials because those last. We're going to build a beautiful edifice. And in the sinful nature and the temptations and the struggles of the world, they may, for a time, uh, walk on the path, the broad path that leads to destruction. But our reassurance is that Christ will bring them back. And so we keep to that hope. And when God says he's going to do something, he does it. So I am not the one who can control the future of my child, but I can give that control to God. And I do that by training them up in God's word and in living the Christian life. Verse 7. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Uh, this just speaks reality. <laughs> uh, we have a notion of radical freedom here in the United States. Um, uh, an interesting notion, but probably not an accurate notion. So when I go to work, and we want to avoid the company, company store syndrome here in the U.S., but it happens. You... Um, aren't owned like a slave, but in another sense, you're owned by your employer. Okay, they're going to rule over you. And the people who have wealth, since I need it to eat and I need it to feed my family, and it's a good thing for entertainment and other, other objectives, I'm going to do things for them. And I'm going to treat them rather well. That's what the whole entertainment uh, um, industry, the whole, um, the words evading me right now, but taking care of people industry. That's what it's all about, right? They're rich, they have money, so they rule over us. And, and that's how it's gonna be. Uh, someone pointed out, uh, I've never received a job from a poor person. Well, there you go. The rich are gonna rule over you. And then the borrower is servant to the lender. Um, I gotta work, <laughs> right? And I wanna keep my uh, car loan company happy. We don't have such a personal relationship that I do much for my car loan company, but um, we see this. This is why we worry about politicians receiving money from, from various PACs and interests and foreign entities. We know that if they're getting money from someone, then that someone now owns them. They have, they have favors that they are owed. And uh, sometimes it leads to them acting in a way that isn't in the interest of other people. Okay. So let's stop there and we'll continue with our next video.